welcome to Water Bear Reads, where I discuss illustrated classics and modern classics. My name is Heather. I'm so glad you stopped by. Last autumn, I did an illustrator explore on Anne of Green Gables, and I researched and gathered all the illustrated versions of Anne of Green Gables that I could find, and then I drove up to Prince Edward Island, and um, early in the morning one day, I photographed all my Anne of Green Gables at Green Gables. And you can see that if you check out my website, I have the pictures there. When I'm gathering all the illustrated versions of a classic that I'm exploring, the first thing I do is I go to the library and I see what I can get at the library. But often I have to um, find other versions secondhand or sometimes purchase them new. And so what I thought I would do today is show you all the versions of Anne of Green Gables that I amassed for this Illustrator Explorer that I did in the autumn. I'm someone who's always associated Anne of Green Gables with the autumn for some reason. I think it's because of the fact that so much is happening at school and so many of the events take place during school and around teachers. Anne herself becomes a teacher and there's so much about tests in college and some of my very favorite scenes occur in, in the autumn. But I know that a lot of you out there see Anne of Green Gables as more of a spring time read. And so what I decided to do back then is to do the Illustrator Explore in the autumn and then do this video in the spring. So split the difference. <laughs> so I wanted to show these to you. I have my Anna Green Gables mug here with me. I'm drinking coffee. Have yourself a lovely cup of whatever beverage that you enjoy and we'll take a sip and I'll get started. One of the books that I referenced greatly when I was doing this Illustrator Explore is by an author named Irene Gamel, and her book is titled Looking for Anna Green Gables, the story of Ellen Montgomery and her literary classic. <laughs> and um, one of the most interesting things to come out of that book was that the inspiration for Anne came when Ellen Montgomery found a picture in a magazine and um, it was a girl with flowers in her hair. She pulled it out and put it up on her wall and that became her vision. I think because it, it spoke to her of um, nostalgia and nature. What was interesting about that picture is that Ellen Montgomery had no idea who that was, but it was actually Evelyn Nesbitt who was probably one of America's first supermodels, if not the first supermodel. She also was a frequent subject of Charles Dana Gibson and became one of the Gibson girls. It's interesting to note that there was an infamous trial involving Evelyn Nesbitt. There's a movie called The Girl on the Red Car Velvet Swing, I think it's called. But yeah, so it was like the it was the trial of the century, this infamous um, event that happened at the time. But as far as we know, Ellen Montgomery knew none of that. She just had this picture of this girl with flowers in her hair up in her wall and used her as the inspiration for Anne. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background before I begin showing you all these beautiful illustrated versions. The first one I want to show you is by the original illustrators, M.A. and W.A.J. Klaus. And these were the very first illustrations to accompany the version that came out in 1908. Uh, I actually read that Ellen Montgomery wasn't completely satisfied with them because there was a, a couple that were not 100% um, accurate. For example, Anne has long hair and this actually happened after Anne had dyed her hair green and so it should have been short. It should have been short for this um, illustration. So that was something that Ellen Montgomery did note that it should have been different. M.A. and W.A.J. Klaus were a husband and wife illustrator team. I did read that more than likely it was M.A. Klaus, his wife, who did most of the illustrations in this version. I have this one. I have had it for quite a while. It's the Barnes & Noble's Illustrated Edition, and I just think it's so pretty. I have a few of these guys. I always love how they put embossing and foiling on both sides of their classics. Just to give you another sight of one of them, and breaking her slate over <laughs> Gilbert's head, <laughs> which I love. Oh, and also they always have these beautiful end papers. The next one I want to show you is illustrated by Troy Howell, who is a California-based illustrator. And this one's a special version because it also includes the original Klaus illustrations in it as well. If you are familiar with Brian Jacques' Red Wall series, then you would know Troy Howell's work. 
He illustrated this one in 1988 and for Long Meadow Press. From what I understand, he was commissioned to create an Anne of Green Gables that sort of bridged the gap between the past and the present. And of course, the present would have been 1988. <laughs> so there might be some elements of the 80s in his illustrations. But just to show you, here is one of them with Anne and Matthew. And then, of course, this is from the original M.A. Klaus version. Here's another one, when her hair is green and Marilla's cutting it, <laughs> that I referred to earlier. The next version is one that I had in my own personal library, and that's illustrated by Jody Lee. Jody Lee is a San Francisco-based fantasy illustrator. She illustrates some fantasy books, and it's kind of funny if you get on her website because you, you scroll down through all her fantasy um, illustrations, and then there's Anna Green Gables. This is a treasured um, book of mine, like all my illustrated junior library editions. Here's a good one with spring vibes. And I've also got the Anne of Avonlea illustrated version, which I think I showed you guys in a book haul recently. But yep, very much a treasured Anna Green Gables. When I looked up Mick Ellison, found a Mick Ellison who had been doing dinosaur art. I think it's referred to as paleo art. I wasn't sure it was him, and I thought, no, this is too cool. If he's a paleo artist, my son is going to be so pleased. <laughs> so I decided to send him an email. And I wrote him an email and asked him if he is indeed the illustrator of Anna Green Gables. And he wrote me back and he confirmed that yes, it is him. And here I'll read you his email that he wrote to me. Haha, ha, yes, this is me. Once upon a time drawing children's books and now drawing dinosaurs. That Anna Green Gables project seems like another lifetime ago, but it was such a memorable and exciting time for me. Thanks for the blast from the past. Good luck with your cool blog and best wishes, Mick. <laughs> so that was just such a nice email that he wrote back. Um, but yeah, it was good to confirm that. And then my son was, of course, overjoyed when I told him that the illustrator of the Anna Green Gables that we had read is a um, dinosaur artist. <laughs> this version is a Reader's Digest version published in 1992. And let me show you a couple. There's one of them. I really love the artwork. The Usborne Illustrated Classics version, illustrated by Sophie Alsop. And I hope I'm saying her name right. She's an English illustrator who spent a short time in Hong Kong and has returned to England and lives in Bath. And I really love this version. It has sort of a plushy feel to it. I don't know if that shows you anything. And it's lavishly illustrated. And it's not illustrated on every single page. It still has many pages where there's no illustrations, but it does have more illustrations than any of the other ones that I've shown you so far. And it has these really beautiful full page spreads throughout the book. I think it's a really great version to go with if you're reading to a younger child. It's complete and unabridged and was published in 2016. I really love this one. I have one version which is a bit of a mystery and I've sent emails and I've um, sent Instagram messages and I've actually posted about it and asked my followers if anyone could help me solve this mystery. <laughs> and it's this Anna Green Gables and it just doesn't have any illustrator uh, listed I don't know who it is, <laughs> but it's Canterbury Classics published in 2017. And I really love the illustrations. They're really beautiful. There are a lot of chapter ending illustrations, beautiful illustrations throughout. And I also love that they're kind of different, like, uh, like this one. It kind of explains how she found a mouse in the cream and what is happening at the time. So it's very interesting. But yeah, if any of you guys know who this illustrator is and please let me know <laughs> so I can update my website. At first I thought it was the same artist who did the Canterbury Classics version of The Wizard of Oz. Um, I think her name is Ch Sherry Zamazing, Zamazing, I'm not really sure how to say her last name. But I looked on her website and I looked through everything having to do with her and she makes no mention of Anna Green Gables. And when I look closer at the style, I'm not really sure it's her. So yeah, I just don't know. So if anyone can help me, <laughs> I'd really appreciate that. Whenever I do these Illustrator Explorers, I try to find a good paperback version. 
and the one that I chose for the Anna Green Gables Illustrated Explorer was by Alma Classics and it's their version of Anna Green Gables. I really love Alma Classics books. I think that their covers are so attractive. A lot of their classics really only have chapter heading illustrations and that is what you have in here. But they're very cute and quirky and Susan Heller did the chapter heading illustrations and she is a North Londoner whose style is great at capturing the humor of the situation. Also what I love about these books is at the very back they have a quiz and extra information for the young readers. Another unabridged paperback version published in 2017 by Alma Classics. I often find myself trying to choose between Alma Classics and Virago and also Source Books Fire, which you would know if you have this version. I'm often looking at those three publishing um, houses when I'm trying to choose an, a paperback version for my bookshelves. But what I love about Alma Classics is that they almost always have illustrations in their books as well as a beautiful cover, so that's really nice. But yeah, so that's Alma Publishing 2017. Speaking of the Virago Classics versions, I wanted to point out that the illustrator of these beautiful versions, which I think everyone loves these versions, is Daniela Jaglenka Terrazzini. And I realized that I had another book that she's did the cover art for. She might have also done interior illustration, I'm not sure. And it's a nonfiction that we have, and it's the DK version, an anthology of intriguing animals that my son and I love to read in the morning during breakfast. But anyway, so she did the cover art, and I just thought that was beautiful. Her works are all over the place as cover art, and she's also illustrated a few children's books as well, and I love her style, especially when I read also that she studied in Milan, having just came back from Italy. The next one is a very special one because I'm offering it as a giveaway on Instagram and Facebook as well as here on my YouTube channel. I will put up a post on my social medias, Instagram and Facebook, at the same time as this. If you're interested in it, just leave a comment down below and then I'll contact you. And this version is by Luisa Uribe. She's a Colombian illustrator and it comes in a slipcase and let me slide it out for you. Her work is so beautiful and just a delight. Let me show you a couple of her illustrations. This one makes another good one, I think, to read to young children. It's um, unabridged and they're rather delightful in a great style for the young kids, but also just if you are a fan of Anna Green Gables and you'd like a version, please do leave a comment below and I'll enter you in the drawing. I will put the rules in the description box below because while I'm filming this, I haven't quite figured out wh what date I will end the drawing on. <laughs> so I will know by the time I put this up or I'll put it on screen. I've done book giveaways before on Instagram and Facebook, but this is my first time doing them where I'm including YouTube in the drawing. And so we'll see how this goes. It's kind of a trial. <laughs> I do want to say that it is for the United States residents only. So I'm sorry about that if you're living in another country, but anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. So Colombian illustrator Luisa Uribe, it's published by Arcturus 2019. And of course the slipcase will be included. Beautiful edition that's great for parents to have because it's great for reading to children, but an adult would love to have on their bookshelves as well. So I just thought that I would offer that one as a giveaway. That is it for my unadapted, unabridged original versions that I have on hand. Before I move on to my adapted versions, there's a new version that I wanted to tell you about. It's the next Barbara Heller. And I noticed that the next one is going to be Anna Green Gables and it's coming out in October of this year. So very excited about that. So the first ones I want to tell you about are these Anna Green Gables series adapted by Kelly George and pictures by Abigail Halpin. And there's several of them. They take little parts of the story and they make a storybook fe featuring those parts. Anne's tragical tea party, of course, focuses on the event 
where Anne and Diana have the tea party that goes amiss and it also includes um, when Anne saves Minnie Mae's life and how Diana's mom forgives her and this one is about Anne coming to Green Gables and the little tiff she got in with Mrs. Lind when Mrs. Lind offended her and she lost her temper with her and how she had to go and apologize. I think they're just lovely and I want to collect them all. They have these beautiful end papers. I don't know if you can see that on the front cover there. I love it when books have something under the dust jacket. It's my favorite thing. And just the illustrations are really pretty. And then each one of them have different end papers, which I think is delightful. And then there's under the dust jacket. This one is very autumnal and I think that's one of the reasons why I always associate Anne of Green Gables with the autumn is like I really love that raspberry cordial event that happens. <laughs> this is by Annabelle Tempest, the Baby Lit series for ages three to five. I have spoken to you guys about these before on my previous videos, but I just love Annabelle Tempest's work. I also showed you her jungle book. I just think that they're so neat. And they tell the stories really well, where they stay close to the events. This one's retold by Stephanie Clarkson. I just think they're so attractive. <laughs> the last version I wanted to show you was this adapted version, illustrated by Jamie Green. And I love this series. It's the Starry Forest Books Classic Adventure Series, and I collect a lot of theirs. They're at such a great price point. And I find them beautiful and very well made. This one's beautifully illustrated and has full page spreads and spot illustrations and full pages. And it's just lovely. I always love the um, end papers because they're sort of art deco. Well, that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Anna Green Gables that I pulled together for my Illustrator Explorer or the ones that I already had on hand. I really enjoy doing these Illustrator Explorers on my website and I'll have a new one coming soon. One that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and I'm very excited to do it finally. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. Continue to enjoy the spring or the fall if you're in the southern hemisphere and I will see you soon. Bye!